Hardy and Weinberg made five major assumptions about populations that would keep the allele frequencies in the population exactly the same over time. There could be no mutations, no migration, there had to be a large population random mating, and no selection. But these assumptions rarely occur in a population. Let's look at how each of these assumptions are broken. First, let's talk about mutations. DNA mutations provide a source of variation in a population. Animals are all born with a small number of mutations, including you and me, and it can't be avoided. These mutations could be harmless, they could be harmful, or in some rare cases, they could be beneficial. These mutations will change the allele frequency, which could lead to a change in the entire population, and changes in a population are microevolution. Migration is another no-no if you're trying to keep a population from evolving. If an organism moves, it takes its genes with it. The movement of genes in and out of a population is called gene flow. One kind of gene flow is migration, which will cause new alleles to show up in populations that didn't have them before, and it removes alleles from populations that the animals are leaving. So immigration, or entering a population, will add new alleles to the gene pool, and emigration, leaving a population, will remove alleles from the gene pool. Both of these will change the normal distribution of the alleles, which could lead to evolution. Another problem for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is small population size, because it can be easily altered by things like genetic drift. Genetic drift is a nice name for the random death or the under or over reproduction of one particular animal. For example, in this population of dragonflies, if I hit a few with my car as I'm passing by, it could greatly change the gene pool because it's removed genes from the population. Or if one animal was doing the majority of the breeding, this could also greatly change the allele frequencies in the population, leading to evolution. Another important part of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is random mating, because it will completely mix the genes in the gene pool for the next generation, keeping the natural distribution of alleles. The trouble is that many organisms, like most humans, do non-random mating, which means choosing a sexual partner for reasons, and not just mating with any random member of the opposite sex. This will cause some genes to be favored and others unfavored, which will lead to microevolution. Now, selection of any kind breaks the Hardy-Weinberg assumptions and disrupts the normal equilibrium. So sexual selection will lead to evolution because individuals are chosen for certain traits. And sometimes these traits don't even help the animals survive. For example, the male peacock has long, bright, gorgeous feathers, which he'll use in a showy dance to attract the female. However, this show also attracts predators, and that big, full tail of feathers could become cumbersome and dangerous when the bird tries to escape the predator. The selection is driven more by reproduction than by predation. But sexual selection isn't the only type of selection. Humans have interfered with breeding of organisms to select desirable traits. Now this could be intentional, like breeding dogs or crops, like these different carrots of many different colors. But it could also be unintentional, like the hakey crabs that were thrown back by fishermen because they somewhat resembled the hakey warrior faces. This wasn't intentional, but the crabs that looked most like human faces were able to survive and reproduce, and the others that didn't look like faces were eaten. Now, all of these examples in the video have broken Hardy-Weinberg assumptions and will lead to microevolution changes in the population. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.